I'm Maliki Tui, lead singer of the Riptide Movement. Over the past few years, we've all become more and more aware of plastic pollution in our oceans and the devastating effect it's having on our marine life. Every year, 8 million tonnes of plastic enter our oceans and experts warn by 2050, our oceans could have more plastic in them than fish. It's not a legacy we want our generation to be remembered for. We wanted to learn more about this issue, so we partnered up with the Clean Coast Programme and travelled along our incredible Irish coastline, documenting and speaking with volunteers, politicians, celebrities and beach communities to find out what changes we need to make and what part we can play to help stem the tide of single-use plastics. We are the Riptide Movement and this is our journey. The band travelled to meet academic experts in IT Sligo and University College Cork to hear some scary truths about microplastics. So microplastics, if we think about the scale of microplastics, that's where we have something that's less than five millimetres. And then we've nanoplastics which are much smaller. So as the microplastic degrades, it becomes a nanoplastic. Yeah. So if we think about scale, um, one millimetre has a thousand microns, one micron has a thousand nanometers. So that tells you how small nano yes. really gets. Yeah. And uh, we've, the microplastic campaign over the last number of years has been very effective through the, beat, the, the microbead campaign. And we're yeah. very much aware we're in our cosmetics that we have these abrasives that really made you feel like, oh, your skin is so much cleaner and they may be put into some of our cleaning detergents. And, and there's an awareness that that actually gets into the environment. Something that's less obvious are microplastics that come from your washing machine and so we all wash our clothes we all have polyester uh, clothing we all wear it we're all wearing it here now when you put that into your washing machine and you spin it the the, the fibers of your of your clothing can actually be uh, pulled off your clothes and then it ends up in the wastewater pipes if you put a big load on you, there's going to be tens of thousands of fibers that will go out so someone someone that like let's say was doing trying to be environmentally clean and green they would still be not causing a problem like on purpose, but because of their washing. Yeah. How could you stop that? Is there a way of stopping that? There's lots of ideas that we can take this stuff from the sea, go out there and capture it all in our oceans, but you're going to harm the wildlife mm -hmm. by doing that. So the best thing is to capture that source. So either at the washing machine where you have a filter in place, or you put something into the washing machine that captures the fibers that they're actually spinning around. And that's the individual can do that. Would them synthetic plastics be like on us or in us. There is some work that's looking at nanoparticles as well. And again, it says all of this stuff is very early stage at the moment. So it's kind of preliminary evidence. But sometimes if you can, if you can inhale that, that there's the potential for accumulation in the brain, there's potential for accumulation in other organs as well. While in Sligo, the lads wanted to experience the water for themselves. So they headed to Strand Hill to learn to surf with Seamus. My name is Seamus McGoldrick. I manage Sligo Surf Experience. I'm actually born and raised here in Strand Hill, so I've been surfing here since all my life since I was 10 or 12 years old. And actually be glad to know this is like probably the best surfing beach in Ireland. And there's actually about four or five clean coast groups active in this area. So if you go out today, you'll, you'll probably see it's a pretty clean beach. The band travelled to Dublin and Wicklow to meet Clean Coast's volunteers. I wish I never saw these, but I can't unsee them now. Essentially what they are are the building blocks yeah. of plastic. They're virgin plastic. And I mean, you would mistake it for a tiny shell yeah. in the sand. Yeah. So you can imagine how easy it is for a fish They're to like mistake pearls, it. They're like pearls, aren't they? Yeah. They're, well, they are, they are affectionately called mermaid tears. Anyone who manufactures plastic, so be oh, it a okay. Barbie doll or... Yeah knives and forks and spoons yeah, or plastic yeah. bags, they would get huge bags of these delivered on oh, site to their factory. They melt them down into various shapes or right. mold. Oh, okay. So they're just, blocks. they're building blocks of plastic, okay. virgin plastic, and that's why they're so clear oh, and translucent. Like, okay, so they're, they're being dumped? Well, this is the mystery really, and if you travel anywhere in the world, you'll probably find these if you look yeah. on the beach. Probably, most likely came from a cargo ship out at sea, because okay. cargo ships regularly fall into the sea. That's kind of one of the, the biggest areas of single-use plastic, really, is yeah. with, like, food, really, isn't it? It really is, so yeah, like, so if you think water bottles and takeaway food containers, so that's definitely, I think, the easiest place for people to start. And yeah. so, like, you've definitely seen loads about it now, I think it's great on social media, and I think even this is, like, a, a month challenge for people to go plastic-free. Yeah. And it's just, like, swap your water bottle for a stainless steel one, 
mm. taste better, last longer, yeah. no weird stuff going into your water. Yeah. And then like, you know, keep cups for coffee and then say no to straws. And then I've got little bamboo cutlery that I bring around instead of using the takeaway cutlery that they have. So just slowly phasing it out, because I think if you try to do it all in one go, it's way too overwhelming. It's overwhelming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. I tried that once and then freaked out and then stopped for a while. So, like, yeah. so it's just little bit steps bit. at a time. Yeah, so I think I literally went like water bottle, then coffee cup, mm. then toothbrush, then yeah. shampoo, stuff like things like that. The World Health Organization, I think around March, um, launched a review on human welfare and human health and, and obviously animal, fish, birds, everything, yep. every, every, every living being is affected, right down to the plankton, yep. you know, and the zooplankton, and um, they float, of course, close to the, the surface, so, yep. so, many, so much fish feed on that. Yep. And then if you're fishing, to consume fish in your diet, they're still researching all of this, uh, but there's now speculation or consideration that these are definitely having a huge knock-on effect to our health. Yeah, you know, um, which is it's, uh, it's terrifying when you, when, when you think yeah. about it. You know, what advice would you give in terms of if I wanted to do my part and if I wanted to uh, help um, with the issues around plastic, like basically to to not add to the yeah. to the I, amount of plastic that's that's. I, yeah, I'm I'm a firm believer in the power of one. You yeah. just change, you can change one behaviour each day or each week or each month or set yourself a target. Like I can relate to that. Um, um, my girlfriend does it herself. It's like, like she picks up three pieces of plastic anytime she's at the beach, yes, or anytime yeah. she's out for a walk. Yeah. And like if if everybody picked up three pieces of plastic, yeah. Like there's seven billion people in the world. That's 21 billion yeah, pieces of exactly. plastic a day. Yeah. We won't be long cleaning them up. <laughs> no. <laughs> Make small changes to help our ocean today. Next time you're on the beach, take two minutes to pick up litter. Listen to us, it's my choice. <laughs> 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 <laughs>